The Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild, Part 19, refitting the engine components to the baseboard and pinning the crank web. This is the original mahogany baseboard upon which the engine sat when I got it, so I'm going to reuse it. I'm not even going to rub it down and re-varnish it because it looks okay as it is. I found the nuts and the pieces of studding in the box of bits, so without further ado I'm going to bolt the engine base onto the wooden baseboard. There is, however, one minor problem. One of the washers is missing. I don't know where it went. So for mounting lug number four, I used a different size washer. Then, of course, it didn't look right. So I went round and removed the smaller washers and fitted larger washers all round. Because these mounting bolts are not bolts, they're actually a piece of studding with a nut on each end. By adjusting both of the nuts, I can balance how much of the studding shows at the top. On now to the next part of the job, mounting the plumber blocks that hold the main bearings, first of all on top of the pedestal. And once again as before I'm using bolts that are one size down from normal 2BA bolts, that way they will actually fit. In this clip you can see how close the one size down 2BA bolts are to the body of the main bearing plumber block. On a Stuart Models beam engine the main bearings are made from gunmetal. But on this engine the builders made them from steel for some reason. Here you see the general arrangement. There's an outer pedestal that holds a main bearing and then there's a main bearing fastened to the base. I'm using an ordinary spanner for this. These spanners are quite good, they've got very broad jaws for their size. Because the barco spanners are generally a lot bigger than these small spanners, I would struggle with a barco in this application. And as some of these bolts are really close to the main plumber block, I couldn't use a socket. To illustrate this fact, if you look at the image on screen at the moment, there's not much space between the right hand bolt and the plumber block side and even less with the left hand one. You may notice that the top part of the plumber block is loose on the base. And no sooner had I bolted this in place, I removed it and tightened the two screws that hold the top part of the plumber block to the bottom part. And now, try and contain your excitement, it's time for a test spin of the crankshaft, and it spins beautifully. Nothing's out of line here. Having said that, the pedestal isn't bolted to the base yet. I've mentioned many times that when you're rebuilding or building a steam engine, if you do not get the crankshaft right, the rest of the engine cannot ever be right. The results so far are encouraging. Now I need to pin the crank web that I machined from a casting to the main crankshaft. But before I do that, I'm going to lock tight the crank web to the crankshaft. I've worked on and owned many Stuart Beam engines, and most of them have had problems in this area. So in my opinion, using some Loctite to hold the crank web securely onto the crankshaft before pinning it is a good idea. Over now to the drilling machine, and the part's ready to be drilled. I made a mark with a felt tip pen where I'm going to drill the hole. All I need to do now is hold the crankshaft at the right angle. As always, the first drill to go into the hole is a centre drill. That way it's not going to wander about all over the place. From an engineering point of view, I should use a V-block to support the crankshaft, so that the hole in the crank web remains at 90 degrees. But I didn't do that, mainly because there was a massive bang on the roof of the shed, because at the moment there's a really bad storm out there, and part of the roof blew off. And that was right over my head. But I continued nevertheless drilling the hole in the crank web. And here the drill bit is about halfway through the steel part. The plan is to drill a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole through the centre of the crank web and the crank shaft, then use a taper reamer, followed by fitting a taper pin into the hole. Now this method is usually perfectly satisfactory, but I've had quite a few beam engines where over time even the taper pin has worked loose, then the engine starts knocking and you can't understand why it's knocking. A word of warning here. Never use a grub screw to hold the crank web onto the crank shaft and never use a parallel pin. Always drill through the crank web and the crank shaft, ream the hole with a taper reamer and fit the taper pin as I've just mentioned. To be perfectly honest, today hasn't been good so far. I went outside and looked at the roof and quite a lot of the roofing felt is flapping in the wind. I'm waiting for my son-in-law to arrive with his ladder to have a look at it. But worse than that, I cannot drill this hole any deeper. I'm hitting something really solid in the crankshaft. And by now, my head is firmly focused on what's happening on the roof. 
That's why this image is out of focus and I held the part in the wrong position for the camera whilst I was reaming the hole. However, I'd got most of the way through with the drill, so the taper pin goes most of the way through, so it's not going anywhere anyway. And as you saw earlier, the crankshaft is fitted to the crank web using Loctite 603. And the other good news is, my son-in-law is on the roof currently, and he's banging away with a hammer as he nails the roofing felt back in place. In this clip, i fitted a bolt, and by tightening this bolt, it clamps the flywheel firmly to the crankshaft. I've also fitted the eccentric sheave, but then I forgot to put the pulley on for the governor. Having said that, I wasn't going to fit a governor to this engine, but I'll put the pulley on anyway. At this stage, I still haven't bolted the pedestal to the baseboard, and everything's looking good, well, possibly apart from my roof. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.